What happens to your body in the dead zone? In the dead zone, climb a risk every hour. Air attack and stroke are increased. And the ejectment quickly becomes impaired. In other words, your body is breaking down and essentially dying. But not for a climber is the same, as we will see in this video. The dead zone is the name used by mountain climbers for high altitude. where there is no enough available oxygen for humans to breathe. This is usually above 8,000 meters. Most of the plus 200 climbers who have a dynamo on Everest have a dying dead zone. In the dead zone, the human body cannot acclimatize. An extended stay in the dead zone without supplementary oxygen will result in deterioration of bodily functions, loss of consciousness and ultimately death. The concept was first conceived in the 1953 by Edward Weiss, Dunant, a Swiss doctor who called it the lethal zone. All 8000 summits in the dead zone above 8000 meters are located in the Himalaya and Karakoram mountain ranges. Some humans have survived for two years at almost 6,000 meters, which is the highest recorded permanently tolerable altitude. The highest permanent settlement now, La Rinconada, Peru, is at 5,100 meters. The higher elevation, the more difficult breathing becomes. Heights above sea level are characterized as follows, high altitude 8,000 to 12,000 feet. Very high altitude 12,000 to 80,000 feet. Mount Everest is 29,029 feet tall. The final of the ascent is known as the death zone. This is because above 25,000 feet, the body can no longer climatize to the altitude. The lungs can get no oxygen and cells begin to die. And now we will see two stories about that zone with the climbers. From May 10 to May 11, 1996, nine people died during an attempt to scale the world's tallest mountain. In an event that is now referred to as the Mount Everest disaster. Unusual weather conditions are believed to have sent oxygen levels plummeting. And the blizzard on Everett also reduced visibility for the descending climbers. Several of them got lost and disoriented in the worsening storm. The mountainers suffered excession, hypothermia, frostbite and hypoxia. Back weathers 
who was part of Krakauer's expedition, a writer, had been discovered by a team member badly forbidden and unable to move or even to respond. Yet after being left for dead and despite serious hypothermia, We others somehow came to walk under his own power to catch up the other survivor at Camp 4. After a storm, we others was again believed dead and nearly abandoned, but he was found to be conscious by Krakauer. In spite of his deteriorating condition, Withers managed to make it down the mountain. He lost his nose, one hand, and five digits, but he recovered. Following his own experience, Krakowicz has said he feels remorse for the others who died, and he wrote the best-selling book into thin air. Krakauer did. I thought that writing the book might purge Everest from my life. It hasn't, of course. Lincoln Hall was a veteran Australian mountain climber and adventurer. Paul reached the summit of Everest on his second anthem in 2006, miraculously surviving at the night at 8,700 meters. On the shant of his family was told he had died. He was left for dead while descending from the summit. He had fallen ill, for, Ill from a form of altitude sickness. Hulse Sherpa guide is attempting to rescue him for hours, however, as night began to fall. Expedition leader Abramo eventually ordered it to guide us to leave the apparently dead hull on the mountain and return to the camp. The statement was later released, announcing his death to his friends and family. However, the next morning, 12 hours later, Paul was found still alive by a team making a summit attempt. The team described the chain just below the second step. Sitting to our left, about two feet from a 10,000 foot drop, was a man. Not dead, not sleeping, but sitting cross legged He had his down suit and zip to the waist. His arm was hot off the sleeves, was wearing no hat, no gloves, no sunglasses, had no oxygen mask without proper equipment and barely clothing. I imagine you are surprised to see me here, he said. Here was a gentleman, apparently lucid, who had spent the night without oxygen near the ever summit, without proper equipment and barely clothing, and alive. A rescue force then swung into action. The team abandoned their summit anthem to stay with hope who was badly frostbitten and delusional from the effect of severe cerebral edema. At the same time, Abramo dispatched a rescue team of 12 Sherpas released from the base camp. I was brought down the mountain, where he was treated by a Russian doctor.
Here we at the one sick base camp the next day, he has an IB good hit. He lost the tips of his fingers and turned to frostbite. All survival and rescue came shortly after the death of UK climber David Sharp on the mountain. No attempt was made to rescue Sharp. While he was unconscious but still alive, other climbers passed him and continued on their own ascents. However, unlike David Sharp, he was unconscious to able to walk, two factors that allow it for his rescue. Hall died on March 2012 at the hospital in Sydney, after suffering from a cancer.